So welcome to another episode of SP Tech. Um, in this episode, I will be showing you how to jailbreak your iPod Touch. And um, I'm, uh, you probably have already seen my other jailbreaking video, but I'm just redoing this because I just found out that jailbreaking the Z Phone can actually be really dangerous. And, um, and 9 out of 10 times, it can actually break your iPod, so you, sh you really wouldn't want to use that. So, uh, I'm going to use a new up-to-date uh, version of jailbreaking called Poning. So, we're going to be using WinPone if you have a um, Windows XP computer and a Ponage tool if you're using a Mac. They're pretty much the same thing, so um, it should work uh, the same on both machines. So, um, basically, if you don't know what jailbreaking is, it's actually... Um, opens up the file system on your iPod so you can install programs, skins, and do a lot more with it than it did uh, come out of the box. Um, it comes with installer, and uh, or you can choose Cydia if you want, but I prefer installer. You can actually add repos, and uh, we'll talk through all that later. So uh, now uh, you'll need to download the program in the sidebar. Uh, it's called Winpone, and um, so let's start. Let's go on the computer. Okay, so um, we're on our computer now, and so basically, I really, really recommend that you um, restore to 1.1.4 on your iPod Touch. So I've already done that. My iPod is uh, really clean now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start WinPone. And if you haven't downloaded WinPone yet, it's in the link. It's in the sidebar. Just download it, install. It's pretty straightforward to install it. So once uh, you've installed and opened it up. You should see an uh, interface looking similar to this. We're going to go ahead and hit Browse IPSW, and then the IPSW is 1.1.4. We're going to open that, and there we go. It's recognized the uh, firmware, and it's uh, <coughs> recognized it. Yeah, I already said that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit iPoner, but I've already done that. You can only you can do that. You only have to do that once, but it, it might take a while from two to ten minutes. You'll just see a bunch of text scroll around on your iPod and everything. You won't notice a difference after, but it should look the, pretty much the same. It just, um, cuss, it just, um, I'm sorry. So basically, the iPoner just alters your iPod to accept custom firmware. Uh, and uh, WinPone can actually make custom firmware for you, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the IPSW Builder. And actually, you can see this looks like uh, a computerized version of installer. You can actually add sources and view the packages uh, right in this nice, neat little menu here. So first of all, we need to install the most important app of all, installer. There we are. Yes. So there we have it, um, and you can go ahead and install whatever other programs you have, but be careful because some programs don't really uh, like uh, restoring this method of jailbreaking. So I, I think I'm just going to install install it right now, but maybe uh, what else? Install. Just for fun, as sketches. Okay, so Sketches is there. So this is um, all the applications that you will get installed on the firmware. So custom images. We're gonna go ahead and choose a uh, cool logo. This is the boot logo. Um, you probably uh, are familiar with that one right there. That's the uh, boot logo that you see almost every day when you turn on your iPod. I'm just gonna choose this one, a simple one, Pwn. There we go, and that's the restore logo when the instead of the iTunes cable. Let's see, there you go. I'll just choose. There we go. There we have it. And all you need to do now is once everything's set, you've had all your uh, images. Um, remember to hit iPoner first, though. That's very important. iPoner first. Um, and uh, you're all set. Hit build IPSW. This should take around uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, maybe less, depending on the speed of your machine. So it is around uh, two minutes later, and it's pretty much, I'd say, around 85%. Um, if you, uh, if it doesn't look like anything's going on, there probably is, but your computer's just lagging right now. It takes up a lot of memory. You'll see a bunch of text here, change log. 
Uh, don't worry about that. If anything goes wrong, just start over. This process is pretty safe. And I'm just uh, letting you know this. So, back to the rebuilding. Oh, and look, we have successfully created the IPSW file. Great news. So now, what do we do with it? Well, we restore to it. Simple as that. And what better way than to use iTunes? Ha! Ah. So we're gonna go ahead and go open iTunes with your iPod connected. So now that iTunes open, um, under the devices list, you'll see your iPod. Just click on that, and then you'll see two buttons. Check for update. Restore. We're gonna hit Shift, the button, or Option key on Mac, and hit Restore. Make sure to hold the Shift key or Option key while you're hitting the Restore button. So you should see an open dialog box like this. We're gonna select the Restore file that we just made using WinPwn. Simple as that. There we are. Make sure it's custom in the front. You don't want to restore your old one. Blame me. So, there we go. The restore is in process, and uh, we'll see what happens when it's finished. Okay, so it looks like uh, the restore was a success. Um, let's go take a look at our pwned iPod. Okay, so now that we're at our iPod that's just been pwned, let's go take a look at it. And there we have it. There's installer working perfectly. There we go. Let's just exit out of that for now. And remember sketches? I installed that. There's sketches. Yay! So I guess everything works. And that's the safe way to jailbreak your iPod. So thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe. If it helped you, just comment, rate. Um, I really appreciate it. Thanks.